Welcome back. So I'm back out in my shop. I'm building some boxes out of Baltic birch plywood. I've got stacks of rips already taken care of on the table saw. I'm building these boxes that are 18 inches wide, 12 inches tall and 32 inches deep. And inside each one will be 16 280 amp hour cells, a BMS, a class T fuse, and and a, uh, a disconnect. We're going to, I've saved you the agony of the ripping. All this uh, ripping was done this morning with this plywood that costs about four times as much as it did when I started doing this stuff. I'm going to be working all with mostly really old, worn out tools. I've been a carpenter for 40 years and these tools got worked real hard early in my career and they get used mostly as, as on a hobby basis now. Um, some of them need repair and some of them are just completely worn out. But I find a lot of satisfaction in making them perform at work we have really nice tools and it's very nice to use them but i get a big sense of accomplishment working with these old tools and making them perform for me and it's a it's a mind exercise for sure i'm gonna be cutting these pieces to length doing some rabbiting to give them a little bit of extra strength. These boxes will all be mounted on dollies. They will all have Anderson connectors uh, so that each of these batteries, if there were a problem, could be turned off, disconnected, and rolled out of the solar shed and um, or just rolled out and loaded up with the tractor into the car and taken home to uh, or taken into the house uh, depending on which system I'm talking about to uh, to maintain it replace a cell or whatever needs to be done so um, I've learned a lot from watching and reading in the last two months. I'm not there yet. I've got huge gaps in parts of, of my learning still because I'm putting off some of the things until further down the line. Uh, there's a progression of how this goes together and right now I'm gonna be building these boxes and. Hi, Rona. And <laughs> Come here, girl. So, um, and also I have a solar shed to build. The solar shed's gonna be adjacent to the rainwater tank. It will be um, three, three insulated walls and one wall up against the concrete rainwater tank. So I'll get a lot of thermal mass and uh, temperature moderation by um, having that as the fourth wall. I'll um, have a small air conditioning unit in the shed and a small heater, and I will try to maintain the temperatures in there between 45, 50F and maybe 90F. Uh, just set the thermostat on the air conditioner to 90 F and let it keep it from getting too warm in there. I think that uh, based on it being shaded by the solar array, my 
my rainwater tank is um, above ground, but then uh, with dirt up against it to help moderate the temperatures. And then the other thing I did to moderate the temperatures is I built a ground-based solar array mounted to the top of the rainwater tank. So it shades the rainwater tank and keeps the water cooler in the summer. And I have a 12 kW array on top of the solar sh on top of the rainwater tank. The rainwater tank is 16 by 32 by eight and a half feet tall. It holds around 22,000 usable gallons, 24,000 gallons total if my math works. It never runs out of water as long as we don't make a mistake. If you leave the water hose running in the garden and forget all about it and go away for a day, you may be out of water. So we try not to make mistakes. We also have a well on the property. I need to fix the starter capacitor on that right now, but we have a well on the property that we don't use very much, but we do have a redundant source of water if anything happens to the rainwater. And um, so this solar shed is going to be built. The concrete's already been poured. And I have some of the material in my garage that I've salvaged over the years, fortunately, because lumber is very expensive and I'm unemployed right now. So we're trying to do this all on the cheap and I'm going to go ahead and get started cutting up parts and I will see you on the next video.